What is going on guys, Rango Vids Mango 12 here and we've got Ultimate Spider-Man issue 37 and we're reviewing this today. In the previous issue we saw Peter reveal his identity to Eddie Brock and Eddie didn't forgive him for that and then we also later on found out that Eddie gave in to the symbiote and he's now going to become Venom and we're going to see that play out and we're going to see Peter's reaction to that. So without further ado guys, let's all jump into this now. So as we jump into this shoot, we get introduced to Spider-Man having another dream again and you can tell that it's a dream sequence because of the art style. We had this very same art style a few issues ago, I think it was like around issue 10 or something like that, and it was when Peter was having a dream about his uncle Ben being murdered, except this time it's about him wearing the Venom symbiote and of course nearly killing this criminal. It's actually really interesting to me that they can actually narrate through the look of the art style, so obviously we know it's a dream sequence because the art style is a little bit more like a metallic look. It looks very much like the Ultimate Spider-Man comic book front cover, which is a very refreshing change of art style in my opinion. So we can see Peter waking up out of this nightmare and of course the only person that he feels that he can truly talk to is Mary Jane. So Peter actually wakes up and heads over to Mary Jane's house, wakes her up by banging on a window and actually standing outside in the rain and I love the whole setting with the weather as well. It seems like one of those really cliche things where if the main character's having like a bad time then the weather is going to be stormy, it's going to be miserable and you can even tell again with the art style like the contrast on the artwork there's not really any bright colours, it's all really dull and grey looking until Peter and Mary Jane get together. Like you can see the vibrance on Mary Jane's hair and you can just see the colours kind of brighten up a little bit when Peter and Mary Jane start talking and I think that's awesome how again the emotion can just come through the artwork like that. It's also very refreshing to be getting Mary Jane appear in the comic because ever since Peter and Mary Jane split up it's kind of had a lack of Mary Jane in there and Mary Jane is one of those characters where Peter can just kind of tell her everything. She's kind of the character that keeps Peter together. I'm pretty sure if Mary Jane didn't exist, then Peter would probably explode and just go crazy. The conversation that Peter and Mary Jane are having right now is actually a crucial part of the comic in my opinion because you kind of just forget about everything that's been going on with Eddie, everything that's been going on with the Venom symbiote, and you just really focus down on this conversation between Peter and Mary Jane. Peter's emotions actually begin to unravel here, and you get to that inevitable part of the conversation where Peter and Mary Jane start talking about themselves, and Peter actually says that he's in love with Mary Jane, and that is why nothing is ever going to happen between him and Gwen. And I honestly believe that this is the perfect time to actually say this. And I think the writer, Brian Michael Bendis, knows this as well. Because if you think about it, it's late at night, it's raining, it's stormy. And I think it's actually a given fact that people tend to open up about their emotions a lot more late at night. So obviously Peter knows this, Brian Michael Bendis knows this, and of course Mary Jane knows this as well. So... As we move on throughout the comic and of course this conversation between Peter and Mary Jane, you can see that Mary Jane is still doubting herself with the relationship with Peter, worrying about him all the time and of course she still says that she misses him but it's more on a level of where she still doesn't want to be his girlfriend because of the danger that she's putting and just all the emotions that come with that. Mary Jane also hesitates and that kind of sends Peter off to realise that maybe it's not the right time to speak to Mary Jane. Now we head on over back to the science lab where the symbiote was actually being held and we go back over to Eddie who has been devoured by the Venom symbiote and someone actually finds Eddie stuck in the symbiote and actually wants to help him and it isn't actually looking too good and I think it's just one of those things where in the wrong place at the wrong time and this person who's trying to help him actually goes to touch the symbiote and it just devours him, it just takes him and it's looking pretty promising that Eddie has probably killed this person so already Eddie hasn't had the symbiote for two seconds and he's already caused someone else harm. Now we flick on over the page and we go to Eddie struggling to hold the symbiote together. He feels like it's eating him, he feels like that it's taking over his body but he's trying to think about Peter and how he did it and that's giving him confidence that he can also control this. Something that actually made me laugh quite a lot when I was reading this was the part where Eddie says, I'll kill you, Peter, and then all of a sudden he just says, my frisbee. Now, obviously, that's going back to when Peter and Eddie were kids and a frisbee actually hit Peter in the side of the head. But I just thought that was incredibly random for Eddie to just think, oh, my frisbee, mid thinking about killing Peter Parker. I suppose that it also suggests that maybe the symbiote is some kind of drug, like it messes with your mind, it really messes up the inner workings of your brain and just doesn't make you see straight at all. Now you can see on screen again here, Venom, or should I say Eddie, has also killed another two police officers. So he's not only had the symbiote two minutes and he's already killed three people. So that's quite worrying. 
Now we head on over back to Midtown High where Peter and Mary Jane are sat in class learning their lesson of whatever's going on and I just love how when Peter's spider sense goes off he looks straight at Mary Jane because obviously the first thing he worries about is whether she's in danger and I love that. Now Peter actually believes that his spider sense is going crazy, there's not actually any danger and then he sees that Venom is stood outside and I know what you guys are thinking, Venom isn't supposed to be able to set off Peter's spider sense, however in the Ultimate Universe that isn't the case. Now guys I can't actually remember whether Venom sets off his spider sense in the future Ultimate Spider-Man comics but right now it's either because Venom wants to be seen as a threat or he actually does set off his spider sense in the Ultimate Universe, I can't quite remember so don't quote me on that. But now we go over to this face-off against Venom and Spider-Man. This is actually where the Ultimate Spider-Man game begins. And you can see that Peter originally thought that it was just the symbiote that followed him back because he gave it its memories. But then it's revealed that it's actually Eddie Brock that's voluntarily taken on the symbiote. And I just love how Eddie says that their fathers died to create him. So it's no longer about creating the symbiote, it's about creating him. Now sadly, that is actually where the issue ends and it was awesome. I don't know what you guys thought about it, so let me know in the comment section below let me hear your thoughts and i'm actually going to be a little bit more truthful you know like i'm going to actually think about the score rating that i'm going to be giving these issues from now on because i've noticed that my score rating for these comics have been a little bit one-sided and that's quite biased of me to do that because i already absolutely love the ultimate spider-man comics so for this i am genuinely and i mean this genuinely going to give this a 9 out of 10 just because of the beginning of the comic we got the different art style and just peter having the nightmares but we also got that emotional impact from mary jane and the peter conversation you actually forgot about venom and eddie brock entirely like if you really invested yourself in that conversation then it didn't even seem like there was anything else in the world and i love that the colors and the art style also went along with that we had the different art style at the beginning of the comic and then during that mary jane and peter conversation we had the contrast a little bit darker the colors were a little bit dulled down and it really brought you into the comic that much further and for that I am genuinely giving it a 9 out of 10. I definitely feel like I've been getting carried away with the scoring system so I'm going to be a lot more careful with that for the future comics but my scoring system is more about the way I feel when I'm reading the comic and that is the general place where I take my score decisions from. So guys I hope you're happy with the score that I gave it at the end. I'm sure you guys have your own scores as well so let me know in the comment section below and for more hit the subscribe button, go to the links in the description to follow me on Twitter and Facebook for all of the latest comic book news and updates. Also for Twitter you'll hear about when I'm updating my videos, when I'm editing them, when I'm uploading them and for my Instagram that's pretty much what I do when I'm not editing these videos so go check that out and there's also still that give away for Renew Your Vows issue 4 on my Instagram so you can click the link in the description to go check that out. Now guys if you want more hit the subscribe button, hit the like button and I will see you all in my next video.